So today we're going to be taking some notes on matter and energy. So go ahead and start by titling your page and I like to underline my titles. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start out with some facts about matter. And our first fact about matter is that atoms last forever. And what this means is that atoms cannot be created or destroyed. And this is not entirely true. Nuclear reactions, like what happened in the sun, uh, those can make and break atoms. But those don't happen on Earth in nature as like normal environmental processes. And as this is a life science class, we are not going to be talking about those nuclear changes. So for our purposes, atoms last forever. So question, will the atoms of oxygen that are in the air still be atoms of oxygen after you breathe them in? And the answer is yes the atoms that you breathe in are still going to be atoms of oxygen after you breathe them in because atoms last forever. All right, second rule, second fact, is that mass is made of atoms. And so what this means for us is that changes in mass Tell us about changes in atoms. Now on Earth, mass and weight can be thought of as the same thing. So what that means is if the mass or the weight increases, that's going to mean that there are more atoms. And if the mass decreases, that is going to mean that there are fewer atoms. So question. If I weigh an open can of Coke and I let it sit out overnight, weigh it again, and the weight decreases, what does this mean about the amount of atoms in the Coke can now compared to when I first weighed it? Now hopefully you said that because the weight decreases, that means that there's less mass, which means that there are fewer atoms in the Coke can. Our final fact is that atoms can be bonded to other atoms and that these form molecules. So we haven't really defined an atom yet or for that matter, a molecule. So let's go ahead and define these things. Let's start with an atom. And this is an important definition, so I'm putting a box around it to highlight that, and then I'm also going to highlight it. Now, an atom is the single smallest unit of an element. So if we're talking about how we can break down an element into smaller and smaller and smaller parts, the smallest one that you're going to get is an atom. And I'm going to leave a little bit of space here and then skip a line and then I'm going to put in my definition of a molecule. And that's so that I can add some additional things later. Also a definition, so I'm going to go ahead and highlight this. All right, now a molecule is two or more atoms bonded together. Now that we have the definitions of an atom and a molecule, it's time to do some practice. 
So I'm going to show you a picture and you have to decide if I'm showing you an atom, which would mean that it is a single thing, or if I'm showing you a molecule, in which case it's two or more atoms stuck together. Okay, number one, atom or molecule? This is an atom. Number two, this is a molecule. Number three, an atom, number four, another atom, number five, a molecule, number six, an atom, number seven, also an atom, number eight, a molecule, and number nine, also a molecule. So now that you know how to identify some atoms and molecules, let's look at some important ones. So first we're going to start with some important atoms. So we've got hydrogen, which has the chemical symbol H. We've also got oxygen, chemical symbol O, carbon, chemical symbol C, and nitrogen. chemical symbol N. Atoms alone are really, really rare in nature. You're not going to just walk up and find a hydrogen atom. It's almost always going to be bonded to something else into a molecule. So some important molecules that we have would be things like water, which is H2O, also oxygen, could refer to the atom, but like the oxygen that you breathe, that's going to be O2. We've got carbon dioxide, that's going to be CO2, and then we've got some nitrogen, that's going to be N2. These are all molecules that are found in the atmosphere. The air is made of molecules, not individual atoms. So when writing about molecules or atoms, we're using these chemical symbols, and there are some rules that you need to follow. So each element has its own symbol, and the symbols start with a capital letter. Sometimes you're only going to have one letter in the symbol, like with H, O, C, or N. But sometimes you're going to have more letters in the symbol. So some chemical symbols include things like Fe, that's iron, or Na, that's sodium or Mg is magnesium, Ca is calcium. So sometimes these chemical symbols can have two letters, but what's important about these is that they all start with a capital letter. The other thing that you might notice is that sometimes I have added numbers, and the numbers tell how many of each atom you have in that molecule. So H2O means that there are two hydrogen, and there's one oxygen. The number always applies to the chemical symbol that comes right before the number. So this means that there are two nitrogen. In carbon dioxide, there are two oxygen for every one carbon. So how many carbon are there in C6H12O6? there are six. And how many hydrogen are there in C6H12O6? There are 12. Good. Now, when we have a chemical symbol that has more than one letter, it can be really hard to tell what element we're talking about. For example, this Ca here, this is calcium. It is not carbon bonded to the element A. So 
sometimes we're going to have a molecule like NaCl. And in NaCl, we need to be able to tell how many atoms we're talking about. And we're, we know that each atom has a chemical symbol that starts with a capital letter. This means that this N is going to be for one atom and this C is going to be for the other atom. So what we can do here is we can just draw a little line to separate these to let me know that I'm talking about Na as one thing and Cl as another thing. There are two different types of atoms here. So let's do a little bit of practice. How many atoms are there in MgO? There are two. There's an Mg atom and there's an O atom. How many atoms are in Fe2O3? There are five total atoms. There are two Fe, which is iron, and three oxygen total. All right, how many atoms and types of atoms are there in N? A O H. So here there's going to be one Na, one O, and one H for a total of three atoms. So now that we know some more about atoms and molecules, let's go back to our rules. The last rule is that atoms can be bonded together into molecules. And this last rule is important, not only because it tells us how all of the different molecules can be made just by bonding together different types of atoms, but it also tells us about bonds. And bonds between atoms are a type of energy. So what's important for us is that matter and energy are different. Matter does not equal energy. And we need to be able to think about matter and energy separately. So when we're thinking about a molecule, let's say I have a carbon bonded to some hydrogens. So one, I'm gonna draw four hydrogens. This is a molecule, and molecules are going to be made of matter and energy. So they have atoms. That's going to be my hydrogen or my carbon. Those are atoms, and when I'm talking about atoms, I'm talking about matter. But they're also going to have bonds. For example, there's this bond here, and there's this bond here. And bonds tell us about energy. So molecules have matter and energy. So we're going to wrap up these notes with some rules about energy. And I'm just going to call these facts because we used the word facts before. So starting us off here, our first fact about energy is pretty similar to our first fact about atoms, and that is that energy cannot be created or destroyed. This means that when two atoms are bonded together, there's energy stored in that bond. And that energy had to come from somewhere. Because energy can't be created or destroyed, we can't just make a bond without having some energy in order to do it. So the next thing here is that bonds between atoms are a type of energy called 
chemical energy. Now, some bonds have more energy than others, and chemical reactions involve rearranging atoms by making and breaking bonds. So if you go from a type of bond that's a high energy bond to a type of bond that is a low energy bond, then it's gonna release energy because you went from lots of energy to a little energy and energy can't be created or destroyed. Likewise, if you go from low energy bonds to high energy bonds, you're gonna to need to add energy to make those bonds because again, energy cannot be created or destroyed. So the last fact here is that changing bonds either requires energy or releases energy. So we're going to focus more on energy later, but we have the notes for now. So let's recap what you should know and what you should be able to do by now. So the first thing that you should be able to do is you should be able to tell me the difference between an atom and a molecule. For example, is HCl an atom or a molecule? That's a molecule. Good. The next thing that you should be able to do is tell me what types of atoms are in a molecule. So if I had HCl, what type of atoms are in HCl? There is an H and there is a Cl. And how many atoms are in HCl? There are two. There's one hydrogen and one chlorine. All right, next you should be able to apply those rules about matter. So we've got those facts about matter. And the first one is that atoms last forever. So let's imagine that we're talking about the oxygen molecules in the atmosphere. Will the oxygen atoms still be around in a thousand years? Yes, because atoms last forever, those oxygen atoms will still be around. The second rule that atoms are mass so does air have mass? And yes, air is made of molecules, which are made of atoms, which have mass. So because air is made of atoms, the air actually has to weigh something. It has mass. And then the last rule is that atoms can be bonded together to make molecules. So will the oxygen molecules that are in the atmosphere still be around in a thousand years? And the answer to this is maybe. So atoms might be bonded to the same thing in a thousand years, but they might be bonded to other atoms forming different molecules in a thousand years. So that one's a maybe. All right, next you should be able to identify bonds as energy, specifically chemical energy. So you should be able to look at a molecule and say that it has both atoms, which are matter, and bonds, which are energy. So while I don't need you to have these facts about energy memorized yet, you will need them later, but you should be able to describe matter and energy in terms of a molecule. So you should be able to tell me what part of the molecule is the matter and which part is the energy. So to test this one, I want you to describe the matter and energy that makes up a molecule of carbon dioxide. That is all of our notes for today.